Justice and Homeland Security correspondent Jeff Pickies uh, joins me now. Uh, Jeff, you've been in contact with your sources since this all began overnight. What are you finding out now about the shooter, his background, and what's the latest on the investigation? Well, you know, I have to be frank about this. I've talked to sources who initially, when this story was unfolding early this morning, were really puzzled, especially when they looked at the profile of this shooter. Uh, but since that time, we've been getting more of an idea of what was happening in this man's life, uh, where he lived, who he was in contact with. Uh, but still, we don't have a complete picture there. That's what he looked like, Stephen Paddock, 64 uh, years old, lived in this retirement community. Uh, but investigators are still trying to put together a full picture on him, as we've noted numerous times on the CBS broadcast today. Uh, you know, he just doesn't fit the profile of, of what investigators have been looking at in recent years when it comes to large-scale mass casualty events. And so, uh, in a lot of ways, and, and really this is what investigators do with any case that they're working on, they start from scratch. They don't prejudge what they have. They mm -hmm. just continue to gather these pieces, and that's what we see happening now. We know this. He had a, a pilot's license. We know that he... Uh, had planes registered. He lived in Mesquite, Texas uh, hmm. for several years where he managed an apartment complex there along with his uh, ex-wife, according to CBS News reporting. Uh, we also know, let's go back to what happened in that room mm -hmm. uh, at the result, at the resort, he had several weapons, about 10 weapons. Uh, we know that investigators have completed the search of that room. Uh, there is another property, though, that they have, uh, that they have located that the FBI is searching. That's in northern Nevada, we're told. Uh, we still don't know if they have found anything there. Uh, but, you know, they're still trying to put together this picture of who he was. Uh, we also know that at one point he worked for a prede predecessor company of Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, that company has confirmed that. Uh, he worked there years ago between 1985 and 1988. Uh, Lockheed Martin would not get into the details of what exactly he did there, but that's just another little nugget of information. Do we know whether he was currently employed? Well, according to family members, he was recently unemployed okay uh, but you know again that's something else that we're trying to nail down as well uh, but you're getting a sense of what was going on in the weeks and the months leading up to this shooting he checked into the resort on the 28th he was gambling uh, hmm. in the days hours if you will leading up to this attack the sheriff saying during a, a recent briefing uh, that there he have to go through hours and hours and hours, and those were his words, of surveillance video. And so they have that, and that's what you get. In any big city these days, you have this uh, intricate network of surveillance cameras, and you certainly see that in Las Vegas with those uh, high-end resorts there. They have security cameras all over the place. Sure. Um, and so they are going through all this evidence. And then you also have uh, local police telling uh, people who may have been there, and again, there were 20,000 plus people there, uh, to hand over their cell phone video or uh, photos of the event, because all of that, once they gather that with witness statements, it's being handed over to the FBI, and then they put this in this database that will help them put together a more complete picture with information uh, that ultimately helps investigators get closer to that motive. One thing I want to clarify for our viewers right off the top here, Jeff, is that a few hours ago, ISIS, through its media arm, claimed responsibility for this attack. And as you have pointed out um, at CBS, they have taken credit for a lot of attacks, and that hasn't ended up being true. I will say that at the press conference we just listened to a moment ago, the special agent with the FBI there did say that right now they know of, quote, Quote, no connection with an international terrorist group. But what does that say to you? Does that mean that is ruled out? Oh, no, it's not ruled out. In fact, you'll notice that in that remark he said at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's really too early to rule anything like that out. 
uh, it's something that you have to consider, and that's why we mentioned it, is because we knew that U.S. officials were looking into it at least. This is a statement that uh, ISIS came out with, uh, both in an English version, uh, and, uh, and so they are putting that out there. Yeah, they have a history of taking credit for things that they did not do. Why? Because they want as much attention as possible. Why? Because they want to scare people. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So they want to incite fear. Uh, and they, it seems, over the last several years, have, have enjoyed taking credit for things that they uh, have no connection to. And so you can't really rule that out yet, but we know, and the FBI confirmed this, that they are looking at it. That's something that they are looking into right now. Uh, but that said, we still don't have, and, and nor do they, have a clear motive uh, that speaks to why this man did what he did. And again, because he appears to have committed suicide, um, it may take a while uh, to get those answers. Jeff Pagase with the latest on the investigation. Jeff, thank you.